Guys, I recorded this episode a few days ago and I sat down to edit it today, which I don't really edit. I just adjust for video. Um, I think you figured that out by now. And uh, I happened to be thinking yesterday about something that Bruce Springsteen said at his concert when he was here in Austin, that he's reached a point in his life where he has a lot more yesterdays than he does tomorrow's. And that phrase has stuck with me and it's just never left me because I think as we look towards our lives, that's probably true for a lot of us. I know it certainly is for me. Then I picked up my copy of Show Your Work by Austin Kleon and I was going to pack it in my bag for an upcoming trip I've got going on. I've read this book before, gave it away to somebody. They never returned it. I don't know who it was. So if you get this and you out there, don't worry. I picked up another copy, but, um, I've had this since Christmas, but started looking at it, reading it. And, you know, like with most things with Austin's work, I just get kind of sucked in. And I got to page 24 and 25 where it's under the section read obituaries. And there's a quote by Steve Jobs that just kind of encapsulates a little bit of what we're going to talk about in this episode. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything... All external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you're going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you are ready or you have something to lose. You are already naked. Steve Jobs. Let's get into this episode. It's a little bit of a heavy one, but an important one. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Ripple Effect Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Harper, and it's just me today. I'm going to do a really short podcast episode, if you don't mind. I like to do this from time to time because I like to have this one-on-one dialogue with you, my listener. I am so grateful that you tune in. I'm so grateful whether you're catching this on one of the podcast platforms or you're happening to see this on my YouTube where you're actually looking at the video of me talking to you right now. Thanks for joining. I am so grateful. I, um, I've had some great guests these last few weeks. I really have been so blown away by the quality and just the amazing awesomeness of so many of these people. I have realized that this podcast gives me a unique opportunity to ask some questions, gain some insight and knowledge from people that have been there, done that. And I get to get a perspective from each and every one of them about what the ripple effect means to them. And it's funny because each and every one of them has a different take on it. They have a different approach and I just love learning from them. I love hearing their approach to living life, finding success, building great relationships, contributing out there in the world. I know we have a tendency as individuals to sometimes think that our way is the only way. And I know I have felt found myself falling victim to that from time to time. Not necessarily a good thing, I wouldn't say. So having the ability to get some perspective from other people, hearing their approach and their direction uh, on this is really powerful. Hang on a sec. I got this thing making a noise in my background. Do, 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 do. This is what we call the intermission. I'll show this to you guys that are on the video. This is one of those little puzzle things, but it's, it makes a lot of noise on the shelf. So I'm going to be like, it's not even a puzzle thing. It's just, I don't know. What do you call it? A peculiarity. That's what it is. But once these little magnets get to going, man, they just start rocking and rolling. I love watching it, but it does make a lot of noise for the podcast. So if you're like, what is that thumping in the background, Steve? Uh, that was it. That was it. And the little squeaking is, you know, this new but old chair that I had. I've been uh, utilizing a a long, um, it's actually a, a chair that I had that was at my pool table. I got it from my former operations manager. I love this chair. It's comfortable. It's solid, but it's high, right? Because it's like, it's like a pool hall, hall chair and it doesn't have wheels and it's not very flexible. And it, it, when you sit here and you do your podcast, it hurts your back after a period of time. So I went back to my old drafting chair 
And the problem is this chair has been used and abused and it's squeaky, squeaky. Although it's it's got wheels, so I can go side to side, side to side. Yes, yeah, side to side. Oh, wait. Doing a show, Steve. What are you doing? It's not Dance Across America. I don't know what, what you're thinking. Anyway, I digress. So, I've been just very blessed with all these amazing guests because they have just given me some newfound knowledge and experience that I am able to draw upon. My most recent episode with Ben Dennis, um, man, he just blew my doors off. He is such a, uh, as my friend Ted Rubin would say, a high level thinker. And I need, God knows I need more of those in my life to, you know, try and fire up this old little tiny cabeza. Like, come on, can I plug some of that intelligence and greatness into this thing? Well, that's what I'm doing. You know, I am learning from these masters and getting the pleasure and opportunity to have these conversations of which then I bring to you to consume in whatever format that is important to you. And what's great is that these aren't just episodes to just let you wash over you, right? These are episodes where you're learning something. You're picking up some, you know, huge chunks of knowledge and experience, and you're able to come and figure out how to apply those for the various aspects of your life, right? I was thinking about a um, conversation I had with Ben about just the fact that, you know, stories, the mythology, there's so much to be learned about, um, ourselves in those stories and some of the, you know, tales that we can now equate to current life circumstances. And when you start to think about it and you start to break down certain circumstances, whether it's, you know, you're trying to explain something at work or you've got a project you've got to complete, or maybe you're being tapped to give a keynote presentation. Stories help illustrate your larger points. They help really bring it home and help like touch other people's hearts, which gets them motivated, inspired, and excited about whatever it is that you're doing. And that's a great, great thing. And so I have uh, been going back to a couple of books. I will uh, at some point maybe highlight a few of them, but Ben made a recommendation. I have uh, um, not purchased any of them, but I've checked them out at the library and I kind of thumb through them and I look at them and I get stuck on some of the stories and I kind of think, you know, how's the bigger picture. How does this apply to my life or my circumstances? And it's really opened up these just new neural pathways. And I think that was his entire point, you know, is that we have to constantly be searchers. We have to constantly be looking and questioning. And I compare that in contrast to the episode that I did with Carol Costello, the former CNN anchor and now uh, professor of journalism out at Loyola Marymount. Carol is one of my all-time favorite journalists. Why? Because she is such a great interviewer. And one of the things that came out of our interview was the fact that she said, we've got to start thinking for ourselves. We can't just take what we read online or through our social platforms or <clears throat> get sucked into the 24-hour news cycle. We have to start asking questions. We need to start doing our own research. We need to start really pushing ourselves to not take everything that's presented to us for face value. And when I compare what she was say, saying versus what Ben was saying, there was a lot of crossover, right? How do we both, you know, as, you know, not both, how do you and I start asking the right questions? How do you and I surround ourselves with people that make us think? How do you and I start saying, hey, look, uh, I trust but verify. And I think that these two most recent, you know, particular uh, interviews really got me thinking that I need to start doing a better job myself. I need to start asking better questions. I need to start uh, allowing myself the freedom to think about these things more than just in passing thought, but put some intellectual capacity behind it, right? Maybe it's intellectual muscle, maybe intellectual muscle behind it to add to my intellectual capacity. I don't know. I'm not smart, man. I'm just trying to figure it out. But I really, it's like they woke something up in me. And that's what I really want from this podcast is for people to really feel that, to get that kind of, that kind of vibe from the guests that I bring on. So enough of that. To go back, check these episodes out, you know, but don't check just those. Oh my God, Maggie Thorne, 
you know, American Ninja Warrior, Angela Gargano, also an American Ninja Warrior. These two ladies come at things from a different perspective, but they're also about pushing yourself and driving performance and seeing the value of what you can do and how you can contribute, you know, to your success physically, mentally, and spiritually. There's just so much, so many lessons that I've been picking up along the way, which have been good. Which brings me to my topic today, which is this little trend that I've seen. It's going around all the social platforms. You know, there's there's a couple different ones. There's one, you know, uh, like a voiceover, quotes from the Dalai Lama and some guy kind of going up a trail and looking for the sunrise. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but, you know, these videos, it's a really nice montage, but it's really designed to say, you know, start questioning, are you really where you want to be in life? I, I like the symbolism of it and it does catch your attention, kind of makes you, kind of sucks you in, makes you want to watch to the end. And then most recently one, kind of this old cowboy guy sitting on the porch. He's got his rocking chair. He's got his stogie, his cigar, and he's got a little, you know, cup of some brown goodness. Looks like some whiskey, could be scotch, I don't know. And he's talking about your obituary, writing your obituary now without distraction, sitting up with a blank piece of paper. And if you look at everything that you've accomplished up to this point, you write this obituary as if you die tomorrow. And then he suggests you crumple that sucker up and you throw it in the trash can and you start saying, is that all? Is that really the point? Everything you've done up to this point, is that, is that the best that you can do? And of course, the perspective that you're supposed to walk away from is that you have gone through the motions, you've done some good work, probably. You probably made some really positive strides in your life, but really the impetus on this challenge is, but have you really lived? Have you really, really lived the life you were intended to live? And much like my podcast guests, you know, this got me thinking, you know, is this, is this a good activity to do? And I got to say, I think it is because I think at the end of the day, maybe, maybe not chuck it in the trash can, but say, look, this would be my obituary. If I died today, the things that I would like shared, the things that I'd like to be known for the relationships that I will have built and hopefully will miss me when I'm gone. This is the life Stephen James Harper right now represented up to this moment, but he is right on one thing. No. I wouldn't be fulfilled. I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be satisfied that this is it. I got more to give. I have more that I want to do. I have bigger ripples that I want to create. I want to have a lasting impression here. But I also recognize that if I continue to do things as I've always done them, which is to wait till change is forced upon me or find that I get frustrated to the point that I decide to change something, you know, that could last six months. That could last another six years. And the view really hasn't changed that much. The landscape hasn't altered in any way, shape or form. And as I approach my 53rd birthday and, you know, well, seven months, (laughs) um, six months now, I guess maybe, um, is this, the best that there is? Hell no. I want to do more. I want to be more. I want to learn more. And I want to experience a hell of a lot more. And I don't want to continue to get up and be like Groundhog Day and be Bill Murray, where everything is the same as it was yesterday and everything is the same as it will be tomorrow. You know, I watched this movie, um, a man, is it a man named Otto? I think it is. I'm going to look it up really quick. Uh, Otto. (laughs) A man called Otto. Man called Otto. This movie I saw a few weeks ago, and it just touched my heart. You know, he's an odd man and super peculiar, super structured, and maybe just a little bit anal retentive. (laughs) Not going to say that I found some similarities in Otto, but I will say that I recognized a few things in Otto. It's a wonderful story of 
redemption. It's a wonderful story of forgiveness. And it's a wonderful story of realizing that there is a different path you can take to live and to love and to experience life. And my friends, I think that's what this man on the porch is trying to tell us. I think this great voiceover, go through the forest, look for the sunrise at the mountaintop videos are trying to tell us. And honestly, I think it's what Ben and Carol and all my guests are trying to tell us that everybody's pathway is slightly different and everybody has a choice, a different way that they can make their life their own. So many of us just rinse and repeat. So many of us just say, this is it. So many of us actually don't even consider the possibility of something else, something different a new career path, a new relationship, waking up every morning with your eyes opening and looking out a completely different window with a completely different scene than you had this morning. Some of us just do the bare minimum to get by on the bare minimum. I don't know that I want to do that anymore. I don't know exactly where all the changes are, but I feel like there is something waking up in me. I feel like there is something new, a new energy, a new flame that's been lit in my gut. The fire in my belly is renewed. I, I'm exploding with ideas. I'm excited about what the future holds for me. And I'm prepared to look change in the face and say, come on, baby, bring it. Because I am ready for something different. I'm ready to start asking better questions. I'm ready to start looking for more realistic answers. I am ready to have better, more fulfilling relationships. And my friends, I want to listen to some brand new music. Get some new literature into this brain. I want to find some new ways to express myself. I want to really lean into the creative side that I know that I have, that I have hidden for so, so long with the excuse, I'll get to it tomorrow or I'll do it another time. Or if only when I can sell my company or I win the lottery or, you know, somehow that African prince does leave me that gold mine that he promised me in that email. I mean, I sent my credit card information to him. I still have not gotten the deed. Um, When those things happen, I'll be ready for change. None of that's going to happen. I said the other day in a speech, in fact, I put it on my slide, big bold letters. Nothing happens until you make it happen. And even though my message was specific around relationships, you're going to have to do all the heavy lifting. You're going to have to put in the work if you really want to build the relationships with the people that you deem important to you. The same advice is true for your life. The same is true for where you want to drive it, how you want to take it, how you want to live it. Because at the end of the day, you're the only one with the hand on the steering wheel, my friend. And at the behest of being just a wee bit negative, I bet you're not driving anywhere you really want to go. I know I sure am not. Not at least in most respects. But... Oh my gosh, all my guests, they're giving me the crumbs. Just thinking about uh, Linda Janak and, you know, uh, what she shared with me, Ted Rubin, what he shared with me earlier this year, all these amazing guests and more to come, by the way. All of them have something to teach if we show up prepared and we're willing to learn. That's where I think I am right now. That's where I think I am. What about you? I would be very curious where you might be right now. I would love to hear from you. If you like this episode, do me a huge favor. Share it to somebody who think you think could benefit from it. If it created a ripple in your heart or in your mind or made you stop and go, hmm, like Arsenio Hall back in the day, things make you go, hmm. Uh, I would love it if you'd share it. 
if you are inclined, jump over to Apple Podcasts and write me a little review because those reviews help me get my message some sort of better visibility in the magic arena of uh, whatever Apple does to promote your podcast. But if you're not an Apple person, you're you know listening to this on Audible or Amazon Alexa, or you are you, you relax, Alexa, chill, chill. Um, you're getting it on you know Google, Podbeam, Spotify, Stitcher. I don't know all where all the cool kids are hanging out. Wherever your ears are leading you to listen, I appreciate you. If there's an opportunity for you to leave a review on those sites, please do so. If not, referrals are always welcome. Right? Tell me, tell me that you came and uh, you you brought me two or three listeners, or you brought me a guest that you thought I should talk to. I'd love that. And if you happen to be catching this on the YouTube, you know, look for me, Steve Harper, Ripple On. You can find it in the search bar. Easy peasy. Subscribe, like, smash that subscribe button, like the young kids say. And uh, I put videos out that aren't going to make it to the podcast a lot of the time. And trying to do some things over there to add value and color and different capacities, you know, for you as well on those environments. If you can stomach watching and looking at this face for just a little bit, I promise you there's some good stuff over there. I do not know why I just went, I don't know if that was Irish or Jamaican or just plain uh, New Mexican. I don't know. Probably New Mexican. Yay. Yay. Oh, oh, bro. Anyway, I'm back to my home roots. Anyway, I want to thank you. This was uh, a little bit longer than I expected, but not too long. I will be back with another amazing guest. If you haven't been listening to this podcast for a while, uh, please go back. Check out all the amazing guests that I have. They are bonkers awesome and amazingly talented people. And guess what? I am the luckiest man on the planet because I get to meet them. I get to talk to them. I get to ask them questions and they're answering them. Like the answer, it's amazing. So I'm pumped up. I've come to pump you up. Hans and Franz, Saturday Night Live. You guys got anybody there? <laughs> Any, are we awake? Is this thing on? I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, clearly it's time for me to go. When it's time to relax, one beer stands clear. It's time to go off when you start singing. Yes, apparently. Guys, I really do appreciate you listening to the podcast. I will be back again very soon with another episode with an amazing guest full of knowledge and experience and words of wisdom for us to live by and to carve our new paths. Grab that steering wheel of life, my friends, and get out there and create some positive ripples. Steer your life into a direction that you really want to be going. And uh, let me know how it goes and where I can help you. I am always, always available to you guys. If I can be of some semblance of help, it would be the honor of a lifetime. So until then, go out there and make a difference in the world, make a difference in someone's life. And as always, you'll make a difference in your own life. As always. That's a lot of always. As always. As always. Feel like Rain Man. Wapner 4. Wapner 4. Anyway, ripple on. Oh, that loud. That was loud. I clapped that. I shouldn't have clapped that. All right, guys. Ripple on. Thank you.